Hi, I'm Daniel Butler. Welcome to another edition of America's Dumbest Criminals. This episode of America's Dumbest Criminals. Put your hands up on the top of your head. A girl and her bottled up robber. A freaky fumigation burglar. A stone stooge in Rocky Mountain High. So have you been drinking or smoking pot? <laughs> it might be some pot in the car. Freeze. All this and more coming up on America's Dumbest Criminals. Here's your host, Daniel Butler. You know those commercials for bug control that state bugs check in, but they don't check out? Well, this pest decided to test that theory. After spotting a home one night that was tinted for fumigation, our pesky poacher decided he would stop and pick up a few things. However, he soon realized that it wasn't just potpourri that had been sprayed in the house. Paramedics were called to the scene and quickly showered and shampooed our disoriented dummy, who was quaffed, cuffed, and then carted off to the hospital for a quick tune-up, where he won't bug anyone for a good long time. <laughs> Poets and songwriters have long been inspired by the snow-covered peaks of Colorado, but as we see in this next police report, there's always the possibility of running into a different kind of Rocky Mountain High. Look at that guy, he must be drunk driving or something. Look at that, jeez. In Parker, Colorado, most folks are God-fearing and law-abiding. This is not one of them. Fifteen next to I'm gonna be following your green Miata. I rate a speed. In a big city, this would mean immediate backup and assistance. But on the country lanes and rural routes, an officer often acts alone. Your hands up! Your hands up on the wheel! Burned twice, this congenial cop gets serious. He speeds ahead, blocks the suspect's vehicle, and gets his man. What is your problem? Why didn't you stop when I pulled you over? Oh, officer, that ambulance, it, it keeps following me. Sir, have you been drinking or smoking pot? Well, actually, yes, a little bit. Is there any more dope in the car? Actually, there is, yeah. Okay, step out of the car. Keep your hands up on top of your head where I can see them. Do drugs damage brain cells? Ask this persistent country police officer and this loony mountain man who will be enjoying the Rocky Mountains through his cell window for the next few weeks. <laughs> officer David Knight talks about how his partner's bark turned out to be more than his bite. You have a funny non-dog but dog story. I had a partner that uh, used to tape record my dog barking. He'd make my dog bark and then he'd tape record and think it was funny. One night while I was off, and he was driving around, and he saw a suspect r uh, run from a car, a uh, car area, and run into some bushes. So he gets on his PA system, and it was a Hispanic person, and he says in Spanish, for the guy to come out or he'll send the dog, and he turns his tape recorder on, makes the dog barking, and about 30 illegal aliens all pop out of this bush because <laughs> of the dog barking. By following the lead dog, he was able to find the whole pack. The suspect suddenly climbed out from underneath the car, put his hands on top of his head, and says, please, 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 don't set the dog. Eh, I don't want a day's work, that's it. <laughs> Anything else, I'll throw the dog back in, yeah. Here at America's Dumbest Criminals, we see a lot of evidence directly tying culprits to the crime. In this case, down in Chattanooga, Tennessee, the square head used a double knot to wrap himself up for the authorities. The young man on trial here, let's call him Freddy, was accused of robbing a convenience store. Yes. He was captured half a mile from the crime with a trail of stolen cigarettes behind him. And yes, in the bushes nearby were a ski mask, black gloves, and a BB gun with his name engraved on the side. Of course, his plea was not guilty. I'm not saying this is not how it is, but don't you think that the cop could have put my name on the gun? Believe it or not, his grand conspiracy theory did nothing to help free Freddy, nor did the sworn testimony of the police. As soon as we drove up on him, he started yelling, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. But Freddy did do it, time that is, <laughs> lots of it. Go back to the couch, 
and assume the position. This, this is, the whole is thing. exciting. Hi, I'm Daniel Butler, and this is a festive holiday dish, Beaumont bacon. Served hot. <laughs> on a chafing dish. <laughs> chafing? We've all been tempted to use handicapped parking spaces before. Oh, I have. Mm, yeah, but know that they are there for a purpose. They're handicapped. However, these dumb criminals didn't realize that lack of brains still doesn't qualify no? them. No, no, I'm afraid not. An officer was crossing through the parking lot of a mall when he spotted a car parked in the handicap zone with the driver still in it and no handicap sticker. Yeah, yeah. He pulled his patrol car right behind it, and before he could get out, another man approached the parked car, seemingly oblivious to the police car right behind it. Well, we're going down. And the two guys began to talk. Just as the officer approached, the officer witnessed an exchange of drugs for money. That's how it's done, I it's hear. It's called a drug deal, That's yes. Called a drug deal. That was the officer's cue to exchange the drugs for handcuffs, which he did very quickly for both men. I would think so. That's a good thing. So now that. it's a handcuffed parking space. <laughs> And you have to have a special sticker for that, don't Handcuffed. you? Handcuffed. Yeah, Handcuffed, Mike. <laughs> like that on the rear. How does it go again? Flip. Excellent. Okay. Very Thank good. You. If having a lack of brains qualified for being handicapped, I'll tell you, we have a parking lot full of dumb criminals. Mm -hmm. Just like this one, Daniel. An officer had just received a report of a car stolen near midnight. It's Eric Clapton's song. It is. Yeah. After midnight. Mm -hmm. He let it all. That's a different song, though, isn't it? Sure. Within 20 minutes, the car was found in a parking lot next to a bar. Rather than wait for someone to come out and claim it, the officer called the bar and told the bartender that unless the owner came out and claimed the car, it would be ticketed. And within a couple of minutes, our dopey driver did come out, staggering, of course, and he came out to his car and ran into the open arms of the police. Well, to serve and protect. Ah, come to Papa. But wait, <laughs> there's more. Yet another parking lot story. But this one took place even closer to home. How close? Real close. A man was released from the Fort Worth jail after serving time for car theft. He was processed and allowed to walk out the front door a free man, which lasted about 10 minutes. He was brought back into the jail a few moments later for attempting to steal another car right there in front of the police department. He wanted to get away from that place really fast. Yeah. Which brings us to our idiot of, of the week. week. An officer was patrolling the interstate when he got a call about a car headed his way, going the wrong way on the interstate. The car pulled right up to the officer. It turns out the female driver just needed direction. Can I help you, ma'am? Yeah, can you, can you tell me where the crack house is? Excuse me? The, the crack house. You the know, crack house. Yeah, do you, you know where it is? Tell you what, yeah. let me come out here. Why don't you, uh... Instead of giving her directions to the crack house, the officer just gave her a ride to the clank house. Forget your license and you may have a problem. Forget it in a stolen car? <laughs> well... An officer and his partner followed a speeding car until it stopped and the driver went into a house. When they learned that the vehicle was stolen, they inspected the car and were surprised to discover the driver's license on the front seat. The officers then asked to see the driver and told him he had left his license in the car. When he proceeded to get it, they arrested him. That's not quite the end of it either. When he was booked, he asked the officers what he should do with his heroin. They said not to worry about it. They just added it to his charges at no extra cost. Sometimes you just have to show people what you're capable of to make them behave. Like this next show me story from Missouri City, Texas. One day, uh, another officer and I got a call on uh, an individual who was rather mentally unstable. He had been over to City Hall whistling, screaming, yelling. We were obviously not wanting to take him to jail. We wanted to try to find a family member to come get him or something. So while we were going through his possessions, well, the other officer found a letter in, in hopes that there'd be an address of a family member or, or his name on there. Uh, we were going to try to get it and, and find a location to get somebody to come pick this guy up. Well, he started uh, eating it. And so the officer started struggling with him to get the letter back. Well, I've taught defensive tactics over the years. So while they're wrestling, I thought, well, I'm going to put an end to this, this little struggle. So I walked over to the pile and reached in and got a thumb and bent it all the way back with a pain compliance hold. And sure enough, it worked. The, the fight broke up immediately. What I didn't know is I had the officer's thumb <laughs> and not the mental suspect. And uh, so the fight was over, and the officer transported the, uh, the guy down to, to the mental cell down at Fort Bend County Jail, the holding cell down there for mental patients. 
and he got curious on the way down there, and he asked, asked this guy, he said, uh, you know, you were really getting the better of me. He said, what, what made you give up so, so quickly? And he said, man, I saw what that sergeant did to you. I was afraid what he'd do to me. <laughs> <laughs> An officer from the Knox County Sheriff's Department in Knoxville, Tennessee, sent us this story about a drunken duck hunter who went afoul of the law. The man was so intoxicated, he didn't even see the officer dead ahead of him when he left the bar. He, he's gonna try and leave. Staggering out of this bar. Well, now he knows the police are here. Right over here, right over here. Right over here. Right over there. What seems uh, to be the problem? Uh, you, right now. You got too much to drink. No, 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 no. not me. No. You got a license? The man proudly yeah. produced and handed to the officer his duck hunting license. This is a hunting license. And fishing. Oh, and fishing. When the man finally found his driver's license, the officer ran a check on it and found that it had been revoked. The man was arrested after he failed a field sobriety test. The next day, the officer received a phone call from the drunken man. The man was quite agitated and said that he could not find his hunting and fishing license. Apparently, drunk driving and driving on a revoked license was okay, but the man didn't want to go hunting without his license because he was afraid the game warden would catch him and he would get thrown in jail again. Coming up next on America's Dumbest Criminal, Bottled Up Robber. All in the family, carted off. Go back to the couch and assume the position. Don't ever underestimate the power of the written word or a sweet-faced grandmother. Both figure into our next story. We call it the Bank Bandit Granny. A New Mexico grandmother wandered into her bank to make a withdrawal. But when she handed over her withdrawal slip, she was unaware that one of her grandchildren had written, this is a holdup across the top. I'm happy to report that the scuffle ended and everything was cleared up. Grandma was set free, the bank got to keep its money, though I loathe to think what the punishment was for her goof-off grandchild. Do you know where you're going to? Do you like the things that life's been showing you? Chances are, if you're a dumb criminal, the answer to those questions will be no, as this geographically challenged individual plainly shows. A probation officer in Tucson, Arizona, told us he received a call one day from one of his felons, letting him know that he'd skipped the country and was now beyond the law. When the officer asked where the man had fled to, he was met with a highly humorous answer. Yeah, I'm in Puerto Rico. Wow, you where in Puerto Rico? Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you give me your address and stuff and I can mail out some paperwork to you so you can fill it out, send it back to me so we can end this uh, probation on you. Much to the officer's surprise, the felon did give him his address in the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico and the geography class dropout was quickly scooped up by the San Juan Police Department a few hours later. <laughs> A suspect in a robbery involving two men in masks was being questioned at the Denton County Jail. After a few moments of getting nowhere, the resourceful investigator took out a computer sketch of a man whose face was completely obscured by a mask. This picture of one of the guys who was involved in the burglary. Do you recognize him? Oh, man. You know who that is? Yeah, it's a picture of me. That's you? That's me. The stunned detective then showed him another one, also unrecognizable. Who's he? This is my friend Johnny. Let me get this straight. This yeah. is you, and this is your friend John. Yeah. He was quickly picked up and taken down to the station to be with his paranormal partner with the X-ray vision. 
It's been proven that smoking is bad for you. But this dumb criminal found out that stealing smokes and running from the police, it's even worse. An officer witnessed a man steal a carton of cigarettes from a store and pursued the light-fingered loser as he exited. The Marlboro moron tried to make a break for it, but he didn't get far. It's not that he was winded, no. He just learned a very important lesson that the Surgeon General has yet shared with the public. Running into poles may also be hazardous to your health. <laughs> what a drag. You have the right to remain seated. Kids are supposed to look to their parents for guidance, but if the parents are dumb criminals too, then the family business has nowhere to go but down. An officer in Porterville, California, was trying to find a boy who had been identified by several witnesses as the main suspect in a series of service station robberies. But each time the officer tried to catch him at home, the prickly parents swore their son was out looking for a job. The officer was sure that they were hiding him somewhere in the house and came up with a plan. He had another officer call the parents and say that he was the owner of a local donut shop and that he had heard that their son needed a job. The perplexed couple said yes and set up an appointment for their son, promising he'd be there. Later that afternoon, the slacker son and his mental mentor showed up and were quickly taken into custody. The son was arrested for the robberies and the parents for harboring a known criminal. Dad. I guess the family that plays together really does stay together in jail. Sure, a lot of places give free samples to their customers, but we found one liquor store in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where the clerks even take care of the crooks. Here's some actual surveillance footage to show what we mean. As you can see, this man walks into the shop looking like he might buy something, but he quickly and quietly lets the women behind the counter know that he has a gun and wants their money. Not overly impressed with his laid-back technique, employee Gene Casey decided to see if liquor goes to the goofy gunman's head. This guy's got a hard head. Co-worker Debbie Elson tries some Napa Red. Youch, that's wine on his forehead, folks, not blood. This round was definitely on him, but when the final bell rang, the women stood tall, and our wobbly wino was quickly arrested and sent to prison. Well, our bungling buffet is now closing, but please join us next week as we serve up another heaping helping of hapless hoodlums here on America's Dumbest Criminals. On the next episode of America's Dumbest Criminals, a loony landlord in shell shock, silly swindlers in swipe and wipe, a harried hoodlum in heist anxiety. A repeat performance in Rice Man Cometh. Do you remember me? I don't know. Three years ago, I've been promoted. All this and more on the next episode of America's Dumbest Criminals. We have a little little mountain peak around here that's uh, called Mount Helix, where uh, we have to close every night, and you get the lover's lane type of a place. You got to close it down. And I had pulled up there and gotten out of my car and left the driver's door open. And I walked around quietly to make sure nobody was around. And then I returned to my vehicle, and I climbed back in my vehicle, and I drove down the road. Suddenly, I heard a noise in the back seat. Well, evidently, while I had left my vehicle alone, a skunk had climbed inside my vehicle. I, I then spend, spend the rest of my shift, which is another two or three hours, driving about 120 miles an hour with all the doors and windows down, you know, all the windows down in the car, back and forth on the freeway trying to blow all this out. Couldn't get rid of it. And I happen to have a car partner that comes in in the morning that is the meanest deputy that you could ever, ever have. He hates everybody in the world, hates other deputies, and he's my car partner, and I have just stunk up the car, and he's going to have to get in it. So I get all my stuff out, and I leave a half hour early. I drive across the street in my own car, get my binoculars out, and I wait for him to come out. The entire shift that I worked with stayed over to watch him walk out to get in this car. So in the binoculars, I'm watching him walk out to the car, looking irritated at about 10 people, including the sergeant, follow him all the way out to the car as he promptly angrily, because he's being followed, gets in the car, closes the door, immediately the door opens and he pops back out again and he's, of course, I had to, I'm, I'm alive today.